Good evening and welcome. My name is Craig Bailey. My call sign is N1SFT and I'd like to welcome you to this segment. Tonight we're going to be talking about how do you set up and run a fusion net using the Yezu system fusion. We have a, a very vibrant community here in New England using uh, the Wolf Den room, which is room number 28941 on the Wires X system. And so tonight we're going to be running a net and I'm going to go through how the steps that you can take to try to improve the experience. Uh, first thing we're going to do is verify that the um, <coughs> we're going to verify that the wires X system is uh, the YSF system. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Craig, and my call sign is N1SFT. And I'd like to welcome you to this segment. We're going to be doing a fusion net tonight. And so that means we're going to use the Wires X system, which is part of the Yezu fusion system. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is verify that the backup system is in place. And the backup system is YSF, which is the, uh, the bridge into the Wires X system through the, a hotspot. I'm going to bring up my uh, Pi Star dashboard here, and I'm going to verify that the dashboard is set correctly. And as we do that, we're using a, a, a Pi Star system here. This is my hotspot. And uh, try it again for the configuration. Log in to the PyStar OS. Okay, so in order to, to connect to a YSF system, we're going to make sure that we're in wires, uh, YSF mode and nothing else. Just make it nice and clean. Zoom down in, in the configuration of the y, PyStar. And I'm going to change that heart, uh, startup host to, from Parrot. And so the first thing we're going to do is test to make sure that YSF system is running. And I'm going to Okay, we've we've selected back to the dashboard and we are connected to the Parrot system. N1 SFT testing to the Parrot. N1 SFT testing to the Parrot. Okay, so that's working good. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch it back over to the U.S. Wolf Den. YSF Wolf Den, Massachusetts. Okay, YSF Bridge number 98899. And I'm going to hit Apply Changes. Okay, we're back, and this, the changes have, have been applied, and we can verify that the Wolf Den is online. And last thing we're going to do is just put it back to the dashboard, and um, hopefully the system will work just fine on Wires X. It's good to have the YSF um, hotspot available as a backup. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is uh, verify the Echolink system is on. So we're going to go ahead and start up the Echolink program. And we're going to connect to W01VES-R and choose uh, from our five favorites there. Connecting to try to connect to the W01VES-R node. Well, that just came over the Echolink system, but that was through the radio. And uh, so that means the Echolink system is, in fact, working just fine down at the station in, in uh, 
Stoneham, Mass. Uh, but I just can't connect here. So we'll try that some other time. And um, let me go ahead and move on to the next part of, of getting ready for the net. And that would be the net logger. Okay, let's go ahead and start up net logger, getting ready for the, the net here. And net logger is one of those tools that really does make running nets very useful and very helpful. Uh, so part of net logger is the, um, the ability to store some profiles. I'm going to change the profile to the New England Wolfpack season profile. And I'm sure I'm already on set up on the profile, the club profile for the Wolfpack, but I'll show you how to change that if you're not there already. So go ahead and change the profile there and hit select. And now I'm going to go ahead and create the net. And um, this is room number 28941. Uh, so based on some of those profile settings, this create net dialog box comes up. And uh, you can see the net controller's name is Craig. That's me. And we're going to be on 147.075. That's the name repeated out of Stoner Mass. And that is FM, but although it's technically C4FM, but we'll just keep it there for now. And hit OK. All right. And... Um, Beta happening there. So let's go ahead and and uh, go ahead and look at the AIM window. It's almost instant messaging, and I'm going to type into this instant messaging window. Um, net New England Wolfpack net starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. Please stand by. All right, so what that does is folks who are running NetLogger as clients, they'll, they'll want to see what nets are going on, and they will see that initial, that initial message, and they'll know that we're going to start it around 8 o'clock. And so the first thing we're going to do is do a file save as. I'm going to choose a, the last one that I did right here. I'm going to change that date just because that's a little bit of a, a shortcut. So today's date, 09 slash uh, dash. 25-20. Okay, we we'll just save it there. And I'm going to enter in my call sign here in the system tab. And it's very important when you are running NetLogger as the net control station, make sure this is set. Right click on, on yourself and go to set official status to net control. Alright, very good. While we're here, we're also going to take a look at monitors window. And the monitors window is where the, um, the stations who are checking in over the internet, they'll pop up over here on that monitors window and uh, we'll see what's good. Alright, so now because we're running a fusion net, the other half of this is the actual WireZX software. And so I'm running a, a, a piece of, I'm going to running a server that is um, a mini PC that's running the WireZX software here. And I have a node radio connected to the HRI 200 box. And so I'm going to go ahead and log into that computer there. And this is the WireZX software. You can see that we are connected. I'll just hit the connect. I'll right click and connect to the Wolf Den. And I, my node radio just kicked on and transmitted a little bit. And I am connected. And so the next thing we're going to do is show the mobile view. The mobile users list is incredibly useful when running a fusion net because you can see who has checked in most recently. And you can see that W01PES through Echolink, a station using the Echolink uh, station connected as recently as 1942. So it's pretty recent. Okay. And so I'm going to uh, arrange these windows on my computer screen here uh, so I can see better. Mobile user list again. There it is. I'm just going to compact these windows a little bit. It's nice to be able to carry uh, the mobile users list on your screen while you're running the net. That way you know who's checked in through the system and you can kind of see quickly who is checking in. Um, 
All right, so we've got the aim window started over here, and we've got the um, mini PC connected there, and NetLogger is running. And let me just show you what NetLogger would look like as if you were lo logging in on the internet. So I'm going to just quickly do a uh, new net window, and I'm going to do a select net as if I was just out there. And this is how the the net appears on NetLogger. And it says any Wolfpack Fusion Wires X space 28941. The idea there is so that folks around the country can can log in using Wires X and they can just pump in the ID number of 28941. All right, so I'm going to close that. That was just a demonstration. There we go. And so I've already got a station over here. We've got one station logging in through NetLogger already, and that's pretty good. So everyone knows that the net starts at 8 o'clock on Friday nights here. And um, this is going to be a pretty fun time. All right. And um, at this point, I'm, gonna, I'm almost ready to announce the, the net starting up. And that happens at uh, about 5 up. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, give the five-minute warning. Good evening, everyone. This is N1SFT. I'll be serving as net control this evening for the New England Wolfpack Fusion Net. We will be starting at 8 o'clock this evening. The topic of tonight will be your small projects that you've got going on at the shack or around the homestead. And so again, we'll be starting the net at 8 p.m. Eastern. Please stand by. I was hearing myself coming across the uh, YSF system, so I know it's working. Um, I've got the FT3 running at all times, uh, and this is, again, tied into my hotspot. The hotspot's running at 433.875 megahertz, and I'm using the uh, my FT991 here, and that's uh, going RF to my node radio at 145.690. And so what I can do here is, because I've got the, F the 991 going RF to the node radio, which is happens to be an FTM 100, um, and the YSF system, the hotspot system, is so far away, these they don't have any crosstalk at all. It's, it actually works pretty good. And so again, we are uh, almost ready to go, and uh, everything looks pretty good to go. I've got my printed out, the preamble, I've got it printed out. The team worked together on this to kind of identify the, uh, the best preamble. And it's best to, to actually print it out literally onto paper and, uh, and have those have it, the text font big enough so you can see it uh, from the desktop because you, you've got a lot going on, as you can see. We've got NetLogger running. Uh, you're also going to try to keep an eye on the, on the uh, mobile users list of the WiresX system as well as you're reading the preamble. And so it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, it doesn't take long to get used to. Okay, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. W01BES, N1SFT, you out there, Brian? N1SFT from W01BES. Go ahead, Kurt. All right, just to let you know, I was unable to connect to the Echolink node uh, using my client here. I don't I don't know if they've updated the software or not, but... Uh, I haven't here, so I was unable to connect to the node on the PC software. Okay, well, I had just talked this to uh, Matt on uh, Echo Link uh, like right after we had uh, chatted, so I know the Echo Link is working. Yep, I agree. I, I've heard it also. Um, I just, for whatever reason, I guess my client. Uh, app isn't isn't uh, properly configured or something. I don't know. I'm not gonna let it worry me. I know that I've seen it come across uh, both WiresX and YSF, so we're good to go. Echo Link is verified over the Wires X system, so that's working good. All right, it, then it's it's just me this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Something on your end to check the uh, force folding settings or if you're on a public proxy or whatnot. But yeah, everything's working on uh, this end. <clears throat> okay, very good. We're gonna kick this party off in a minute. All right, it's almost t it's almost go time. It's always it doesn't matter how many times you've done net control operations. You get a little you get a little uh, bit of uh, butterflies uh, right before the kickoff, but uh, you get over that pretty quick. All right, here we go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New England Wolfpack Fusion Net. This is Craig, November 1, Sierra Fox Tango. That's N1SFT, your net control. This net was established to promote the use of Yezu System Fusion without, within the New England area and to help users get the most of their fusion radios. This is a New England-centric net, but former New Englanders, New Englanders at heart, and all amateur stations anywhere are welcome and encouraged to check in. This net is directed, but informal. Please wait until directed by net control before keying up. Let go of it. Before we continue with the net, is there any emergency or time-sensitive traffic? If so, please call now. There we go. All right. Very good. That's what we like to hear. No emergencies out there. This net meets every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Wolfpack Network. The network currently has multiple full-time linked fusion and analog repeaters in the New England area. The network also features WiresX room number 28941, the Wolf Den. Also the YSF reflector, US Wolf Den, and the Echolink node, W01BES-R. You can find more about the Wolfpack network on the web at www.w01ves.com. <clears throat> we are running this evening on NetLogger, so if you're near a computer with an internet connection and you wish to follow along, I recommend it. It uh, makes it a lot of fun. And so we are on NetLogger tonight. And very good. So. There are multiple internet-based links with at least three seconds of latency. When keying up, remember to wait a second or two before speaking to allow these links to connect. I also suggest hesitating a second after you are done speaking before unkeying, as sometimes your last syllable can be cut off. We welcome technical questions related to Fusion Radio. When checking in, let me know that you have a question. I will take the questions first before going down the list for comments. We will also call for echo link stations separately. <clears throat> you check into this net by keying up, giving your call sign phonetically, your name, your location, and if you have an announcement or technical question for the net. I will repeat the list of every station that checks in. If you are not on that list, you doubled with someone and I missed you. So please try again. Once we go through the check-ins, I will first call any stations with an announcement. Then we will go through the stations with questions. Finally, we will go through the entire list for general comments. From now until the crisis with the coronavirus has passed, I will be starting the net with a call for check-ins from stations that are in need of assistance. If there is something you are looking for that you really need but can't find, if you are under self-quarantine and need help with something or anything else you need assistance with as a result of the virus, check in. We will try to connect you with someone who can help you. Any stations in need of assistance, please check in now. <clears throat> okay, also a good sign. No one's out there needing help, but again, if you want any help, please uh, call us up offline and we can certainly give you some connections. Okay, for tonight's topic, we'll be discussing your small projects. 
anything you've got at the shack or at the homestead, we want to hear it. Kind of an uh, open, open-ended topic. And um, if we can tie it into to ham radio, that'd be great. We'll circle back to the topic after we've completed check-ins. At this time, let's take some check-ins from the state of Massachusetts. Any amateurs in the state of Massachusetts, please come now. Oscar 1, Victor, Echo Sierra, W01, DEM, Brian, Sona Map, Steven, Kilo, Charlie 1, Hotel, Hotel, Kilo, KC1, HHK, Paul, and Quincy Maps, good evening. <clears throat> Got an echo link session trying to check in there. We'll we'll circle back for echo link. There is. KC1, JRE, Ed in Gloucester. I have a question. Okay, so notice how I had I picked up his call sign from Wirezax before he'd even sent it. That's the reason why we have YRSX, the mobile users list running. Here is N1JEI, Tony and Gloucester, no traffic, we'll be in and out this evening. 7-3 to all. I'm going to check him out right now. Bunch of Pauls tonight, bunch of Tonys. It's coming pretty quick. And give it a minute. All right. Okay, let's hold there. Let's hold there. All right, very good. We've got a pretty strong start tonight. First off, we've got Alpha Bravo 1, X Ray Kilo, Tony and Andover, followed then by W01, VES, Brian and Stoneham. Then KC1, Hel Hotel, Hotel Kilo, Paul and Quincy, followed then by Kilo Charlie 1, Juliet, Romeo, Echo, Ed and Gloucester. Then we had November 1, Juliet, Echo, Indigo, Tony and Gloucester. Lastly, we had W1, Delta, Uniform Delta, Paul and Lynn. If you did not hear your name, you were doubled. Please come now. Here is Kilo 1, Tango Alpha Tango, K1GAT, Chris and Blossom, no traffic. Good. And so as they're coming in, notice their names are coming in correctly, except for a few, one of them up top. Notice I entered his name. Kilo, Charlie 1, Kilo Romeo Romeo, Matt, one third, no traffic. Matt's coming in through Echo Link, but that's okay. He's still in mass. <laughs> Okay, very good. That round, we've got Kilo 1, Tango, Alpha Tango, Chris and Gloucester, followed by Kilo Charlie 1, Kilo, Romeo, Romeo, Matt, to the Echo Link system. Very good. Any other Mass Massachusetts stations wishing to check in, please come now. And close the door in Mass, and we'll move on to New Hampshire next. This is going to come fast. Okay, very good. I'm sure there are other mass stations out there, but we'll check you in later on. Let's go ahead to the state of New Hampshire. Any stations in the state of New Hampshire wishing to check in, please come now. I've got these guys in my log. That's why they're coming up red. <laughs> I should try to change that. Q 
Elo White Trey, one Bravo, KS, one D, Brian and Gone Town, one Trap. Elo Charlie, one. Elo Papa Sierra. Casey, one LDS. Dave in Manchester. Oh, I see that you got me. <laughs> That's right, Dave. <laughs> KC, one. NAQ. Oh, in Pella. <clears throat> Give it a minute. We'll take a pause. Okay, very good. Let's take pause there. We've got W1, MUZ, Dan in Bedford. Followed then by Kilo Charlie 1, Lima, Papa Sierra, Dave in Manchester. Then we had Kilo X Ray 1, Bravo, Brian in Gosstown. Followed then by Kilo Charlie 1, November, Alpha, Quebec, Bob in Pelham. Any other New Hampshire stations wishing to check in, please come now. <coughs> Here is KC1, LXZ, Mike. Gosstown, New Hampshire, and then out. We'll check him out. Okay. This is uh, Kilo Bravo One, Echo Echo Uniform, John in Manchester. No traveling. Good evening. Okay. Very good. We've got Kilo Charlie 1, Lima X-Ray Z, Mike in Gosstown. He is checked in and out. Thanks for coming to the party, Mike. Appreciate it, and hope to see you next week. Followed then by Kilo Bravo 1, Echo, Echo Uniform, John in Manchester. Good evening, sir. Any other stations in New Hampshire wishing to check in, please come now. Kilo 1, Alpha Charlie Lima. Fred in Rochester. Ah, Fred's on. Good. So I'm going to add Fred because he isn't in the club log. I'm going to hit enter, right click on his log, and add update club info. And so what we're doing is we're running a log on this machine here, and we're going to be adding these guys to that log so that when the next time he comes in, his, his preferred name pops up. Okay, Fred. Kilo 1, Alpha, Charlie Lima, Fred in Rochester. Thanks for checking in. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Maine. Any amateur stations in the state of Maine, please come now. Hello, Charlie One, Juliet, Mike Hotel, Brian, North Waterboro, Maine. There we go. Woohoo! We got a Mainer in there. Good. Very good. <clears throat> All right, Kilo Charlie 1, Juliet, Mike Hotel, Brad in North Waterboro, thank you very much. You're our sole Mainers tonight. Any other stations in Maine wishing to check in, please come now. There's usually a couple in Maine. We'll see what we can do. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to Echo Link. Are there any stations out there on the Echo Link stations, the Echo Link system? Please come now. Good. Let's go ahead and start to broaden this net. Any amateur stations anywhere in New England, please come now. We had one from Rhode Island last week. They're rare. Any stations anywhere in the USA, please come now. We usually have a couple from Michigan. Whiskey 7, Romeo Mike Hotel, Rick in Everett, Washington State. Kevin, North Dakota. KC8, NFN, Kevin in North Dakota. Okay, from the national side, we've got W7, Romeo Mike Hotel. <coughs> Rick in Everett, Washington. You win the award so far. And then followed then by Killer Charlie 8, November, Fox, November, Kevin in Minot, North Dakota. 
Any other national stations wishing to come in, please come now. Okay, let's broaden it out to planet Earth. Any stations on planet Earth who wishing to check in, please come now. Here is November 1, Foxtrot Charlie Charlie in the island of Lithra. <laughs> and uh, his... Okay, we've got Dave and Wolfboro, November 1, Foxtrot, Charlie, Charlie. Any other stations anywhere on planet Earth, please come now. Or any last-minute check-ins. Any last-minute check-ins, please come now. Okay. All right. We've got Neil. Okay, Neil, I got you in there, and I'll update my system. It's still showing your Bedford address. Okay, November Bravo 9 Delta, Neil in Maine. I, I missed your, your town. Go ahead with your town again, please, Neil. Okay, Neil, thanks very much for that update. Appreciate that much. All right, folks, we'll check. We'll make some additional uh, pauses for check-ins throughout the night. This has been a real strong start. We've got uh, 21 on the list so far, and it's only 17 past the hour. And so thanks very much, and I appreciate that um, checking in. We've got one question tonight from Ed and Gloucester. We're going to start there. Killer Charlie 1, Juliet, Romeo, Echo. Ed and Gloucester, go ahead with your question, sir. Um, yes, it's, um, this is for everyone. If you were going to buy a new power supply, would you go linear or switch? And anyone who has an opinion one way or the other would be interested to hear it. Um, thank you. This is Ed Casey, one JRE, and I'll be waiting for replies. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a great question. And uh, why don't we let that ride all night long? And uh, so everyone on the net, why don't you pipe up with your opinion, uh, linear or switcher is really the question here. And so thanks for that question, Ed. And um, I'll give you my opinion at the end of the night, I promise. <laughs> and so let's start this party off. Uh, Tony in Andover, Mass, uh, Alpha Bravo 1, X-Ray Kilo. Tonight's topic is any projects that you've got going on. Kind of an open-ended, it's the end of the month, you know, the fourth Friday of the month. Let's have some fun. So go ahead, Tony. The podium is yours. little projects and I finish them. Uh, right now I don't have any outstanding projects. Uh, I did incorporate a, um, a new headset for my HF rig. I also uh, would to adapt it to, uh, to the uh, MTM 400. Uh, probably that could be considered a small switch. Good. As far as the linear switches, uh, in my opinion, uh, way back when switches were really terrible. A lot of smoke. All right, Tony, thanks very much. Appreciate that. And, yeah, certainly uh, headsets projects 
believe it or not, art project. <laughs> uh, Miguel and I were working on, a, on that exact same project uh, earlier this week. And so if he checks in later on, he'll tell you all about it. Let's move on to Brian and Stoneham, W-O-1-V-E-S. Uh, any comments for the net tonight? Plus, don't forget the question of the night is switcher or linear. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. Thank you, Craig, and everybody else on the net here. Great job with the net. Again, for taking it. Two weeks in a row, too. Very appreciated. Uh... Well, let's see, answer the first question, they have a small project. Um, there are all kinds of little projects always going on there with various different things. And nothing uh, too much ham radio related, uh, other than the fact that uh, the, the, the project of relocating my uh, stolen distributor repeater back to my house, unfortunately. That's Actually, where I am right now, I'm up at my uh, uncle's house. Uh, doing some cleaning up in the attic, so I'm technically at the stolen repeater site right now, standing next to <laughs> I'm having no problems getting into the repeater tonight. Right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess that's one project, trying to get uh, things cleaned up enough to uh, get that repeater moved and get the house ready to be built. It's kind of a big project. Of course it is. There's a lot to do here. Uh, most of my little projects right now have been really in the uh, camping realm. Uh, I'm doing a lot of camping uh, lately. And, uh, I'll get my uh, Mercury Mountaineer all set up. Camping. In fact, uh, last week, I, which is why I was on the net here, I was doing a huge camping adventure. A week long, up in the uh, White Mountains. Uh, basically, I had left that uh, left Sunday afternoon and come back, came back to last Saturday. So I was there for six nights, seven days. And, uh, different campground every night, except for one night I stayed, tw- stayed, stayed two nights at one campground. So there were five different campgrounds over there. Fun adventure. A lot of the projects I'm doing are setting up solar systems, uh, water tanks, uh, things like that for my uh, SUV setup. There, I'm still working on projects to uh, further develop some more electrical stuff there to try and improve the uh, operations of the electrical system, that sort of stuff. So, not a whole lot of ham radio stuff uh, going on though, project wise, like the uh, relocating of the uh, solar repeater. So, anyway, let me drop. Don't hit that three minute timer. I don't know if there's any other projects I'm working on right now there, but, uh, well, I'm starting on my uh, Halloween display project, which is also going to be an interesting challenge. <laughs> Halloween night will have, uh, <laughs> normally, under normal year, we'll have two to three hundred people come through my backyard on Halloween night. I usually open up the backyard and, and uh, have the trick or treaters come through the yard and things like that. And it's a big uh, walkthrough we do with a whole bunch of animatronics and things like that. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, coronavirus and things like that, it's not really going to be a uh, possible option this year. Right. Uh, which is uh, very disappointing considering it's on a Saturday, we have a full moon, and it's going to be uh, an extra hour of night because uh, the clock's going to change until the next day. So, I guess my uh, biggest project uh, of, uh, right now is uh, setting up my uh, Halloween display to uh, be a different format this year. We'll be uh, setting up things around the uh, edge of the property. I live on a condo lot, so I'm going to be able to take advantage of uh, lots of uh, sidewalks. So I'm going to be setting up my Halloween display along there instead so that people can walk by it rather than walk through it. So I'm not going to have to be crowd of people in my backyard. So I've got, uh, it's going to be an interesting solution to the problem. It's not going to be uh, my normal setup, so it's going to take a bit of effort to get things set up the way I need it. Now I'm actually getting kind of excited about it because it's not the same old, same old thing. It's going to be something different. The virus is actually for- forcing me to uh, make a change in the display that's uh, uh, going to make things a little bit more interesting. So that's uh, that project. Let me drop one more time. And uh, the answer to the question of uh, linear versus switching, I definitely go switching. Uh, I, know, uh, I, uh, I, I agree with the uh, previous station there that uh, the uh, switching power supplies have come a long way from where they used to be. Um, they're smaller, lighter, and easier to handle there than the big uh, heavy linears. I have an Astron 35 amp linear power supply, and that thing's big and it's heavy. <coughs> I definitely go switching. Unless you're running a big, big contest station where absolutely no noise is critical, uh, I'd get the switching. I mean, you're not really going to notice the noise from it. They're smaller, they're lighter, easier to handle, things like that. So that's, that's my opinion. <coughs> anyway, other than that, uh, 
not much else over here. I've got a couple more trips left this season. I went to, uh, around the Scotty, uh, in a few weeks. There's camping out there, and then I'm trying to figure out, see if I can find some sort of a cabin or something in the north of Maine. And, uh, now that they've opened Maine up again for Massachusetts residents, I can actually travel up there and camp there again. So I'm trying to find a cheap cabin I can stay in for a few months, uh, <laughs> at the beginning of November. With that, uh, nothing else over here, so I hope everybody has a uh, great weekend, and I will pass it back to <coughs> Captain Cole. This is WL1 GTO. <coughs> All right, Brian, thanks very much. Appreciate those comments. And um, the, the camping trips uh, for me still aren't done either. Of course, I don't have as, uh, as mobile a setup as you do, so uh, very good. And I, I, um, I'm kind of thinking the same thing on the switcher. Um, uh, that's what I run. Switcher, but uh, I'll, I'll say more about that later. Thank you very much, Brian. Let's go ahead down to Paul and Quincy, KC1, HHK. Uh, go ahead, sir. Kilo, Charlie, one hotel, hotel Kilo, KC1, HHK. Paul here in Quincy, Mass., City of Presidents. Good to check in tonight on the uh, Wolf's Den net. And uh, it's tough to follow Brian, man. This guy's like a, the Energizer uh, Bunny. He's got uh, more stuff going on, more irons in the fire. Um, as far as projects for me, I just got through with a big cleanup at the house here. Uh, dumpster in the driveway and uh, get rid of a bunch of stuff. And uh, as far as ham radio goes, uh, still trying to get my port forwarding figured out going to relocate the router, see if that helps out, and uh, and dive into that a little bit more now that the winter is upon us. Um, but that's it. Thanks for uh, hosting the net tonight, Craig, and uh, this is KC1HHK back tonight. Thanks, Paul, for checking in. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, it's, it is tough to, to follow along after Brian. Uh, we try, my kids and I, we try to do a, a small uh, Halloween uh, deal. We, well, our deal up here in Hudson, New Hampshire, is uh, we do a, a campfire, uh, but that pales in, the, in comparison to what Brian pulls off. We've heard of what Brian does over the years, and uh, it is impressive. <laughs> so, for sure, Paul. Thanks very much for checking in. And uh, so let's go ahead, and before we, we check back in with Ed, let's go ahead and check real quick. Are there any stations wishing to check in to the New England uh, Wolfpack Fusion Net? Any stations anywhere, please come now. This is UN in New Durham, New Hampshire, coming in on the Ossipee Link. And, and I think Fred is. N one J I W. N one E U N New Durham, New Hampshire. Okay, I've got Joe in Holliston, Mass. N one J I W. That's Juliet Indigo Whiskey. Good evening, Joe. And followed then by November 1, Echo Uniform, November, Bob in New, ha New, New Durham. Very good. Thanks for checking in. Uh, any other stations out there wishing to check in at this time, please come now. Okay, thanks very much for checking in, guys. And uh, I'll periodically check uh, about every other five, uh, five comments. We'll take a break and ask for check-ins. So let's go back up to line number five. That's Ed and Gloucester, Kayla, Charlie, one, Juliet, Romeo, Echo. Um, any comment? It was probably too early for you to make a, a decision yet so far, so I'll, I'll, we'll circle back on the question uh, at the end of the night. But, um, Ed, any comments as far as projects going on? Go ahead. The podium is yours. Yeah, um, in the last two weeks, we've been uh, tracking down packages, and it isn't just the post office. It seems to be all the carriers. Um, I think the post office being backed up or whatever, a lot of the other carriers are getting extra stuff now. So um, it's just amazing how 
things that would take a week to come with medication now take like sometimes two weeks. So um, it's, and you have to go online and call people and it can become a hassle. It's true. Um, back to the net. This is Ed Casey, one JRE. <laughs> For sure, Ed. I appreciate that. Yeah, the, uh, everything's slowing down. <laughs> Very good. All right, we've got uh, Tony has checked out November 1, Juliet Echo Indigo. Tony has checked out. If he wants to check back in, certainly uh, give us a check back in and we'll throw you back on. Let's go ahead down to Paul and Lynn Mass, W1 Delta, Uniform Delta. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate that. The um, sounds like we've we've got a linear amp, uh, sorry, a linear power supply uh, aficionado, and uh, very good. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate that. And uh, you've got some serious power c capacity over there. Two 35 amp power supplies. That's um, that's pretty that's pretty impressive. And so thanks for the comments tonight, Paul. Very good. And let's go ahead and move down to Gloucester, Mass. And um, that's uh, Kilo Charlie One Tango Alpha Tango. Chris and Gloucester, go ahead, sir. Oh, good evening, Craig. <laughs> Everyone else, this is K1 GAT. Um, I own one of each of uh, the power, uh, the set power supplies. I own a, a 75. Uh, uh, 75 amp linear, Woo! which has never failed me. It's been on for about five years now. <laughs> the only time it's ever been off is when I've lost power. Yeah. And I also have a uh, 30 amp. Uh, it, it's made for ham radio, but it's generic. I have no idea who made it, but uh, it was uh, sold by a ham radio company. That's a 30 amp switching, and that's also worked flawlessly for me with uh, no problems at all. Uh, it's also been on for a few years. So, uh, yeah, the 70 amp runs my entire station. And I have a second station in my living room, uh, which I'm on now. And um, uh, that's the, the, the 30 amp runs that. But no problems there. And uh, as far as small projects, oh, I got a million of them. Um, I, I got to start uh, finishing them up. I always have uh, uh, some sort of microphone project on the table. And uh, I like to build their tennis also. I experiment with them. Uh, it's just a hobby. Uh, but, yep, that's about all I have. Uh, great job with the net, Craig, as always. And 7-3-0, uh, have a great weekend and, uh, and a great week to come. 
This is K1GAT, and we'll return back to that. All right, Chris. Thanks very much. Uh, so far, you you've got the uh, the heavy duty station, 75 amps plus a, a backup 30 for, for your secondary station. That's pretty impressive. And um, I'm sure you don't have any problems keeping the shack warm either at, on a cold February evening either. <laughs> so thanks very much, Chris, for checking in. I appreciate those comments. And uh, let's go ahead down to Worcester. Killer Charlie One, Kilo Romeo, Romeo, Matt, and Worcester. Go ahead, sir. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. And um, that it's it's an interesting. <laughs> I, I had a chuckle there because you, you said you don't own either, and so I, I sometimes we have to remember that uh, ham radio today has so many technologies available to us. And uh, so I think Matt is using an Android device tonight. I, Matt will probably correct me later, I'm sure. But uh, either that or his PC. He and I have talked a couple times. That's pretty interesting. And uh, so thank you, Matt, for that. And um, the DMR, that's a, that's a project that will keep you uh, busy forever. That's why I quit it, <laughs> and I chose Fusion. All right, so before we go to New Hampshire, let's, let's pause here and check for any last-minute check-ins. Any other stations out there wishing to check in to the New England Wolfpack Fusion Net, uh, please come now. Alrighty then, hearing none, let's move on to the great state, the Granite State, New Hampshire. Let's start with Whiskey One, Mike Uniform Zulu, that's Dan in Bedford. Go ahead, sir. Okay, Dan. Thanks very much for that. Appreciate that. Yeah, I um, I I, I I'm the same way. I I've never owned a linear uh, power supply either. It's always been switchers for me. And so, uh, and I'm also doing the same thing as far as uh, getting the the lawnmower kind of serviced and uh, getting ready for what we know what is coming. <laughs> and so let's move down to uh, up to Manchester. Dave, Killer Charlie One, Lima, Papa, Sierra, Dave in Manchester. Go ahead, sir.
room to paint. Um, they're on the house that I'm hoping to get this fall. So it's going to be on wall. Um, other than that, just regular uh, putting summer stuff away, getting ready for the fall and the winter. As far as uh, ham radio goes, I still have the antenna that I'm looking to install in the attic. All right, Dave. Thanks very much for checking in, and thanks for asking about Bill. Uh, Bill and I, I spoke with Bill uh, late last week. He has been uh, busy uh, other doing other things. He is okay. Everything is fine with Bill, W1WMM, and um, I'll let him know that uh, the guys on the net were asking about him, so thanks very much. Appreciate that. And um, Yeah, the small projects around the house, that's kind of what we all do, New Englanders. We're busy bees getting ready for you-know-what. And a couple of us really do appreciate the you know what the snow, of course. And um, look, I'm looking forward to it myself. So, all right, thanks, Dave, very much. And uh, why don't we go over to Goffstown, Brian and Goffstown, Kilo Charlie. I'm uh, sorry, Dave. Sorry, Brian. K, Kilo X-ray one Bravo, Brian and Goffstown. Go ahead. Oh, good evening on the net. This is KX1B. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have all linear power supplies with the exception of the switching power supply for my uh, my linear cam, which is kind of ironic because it's a linear amp and has a switching power supply. <laughs> but uh, I've always had uh, linear uh, linear power supplies. <laughs> Okay, so um, I have not really had much experience with the newer uh, generation of switching power supplies. I think uh, they, they uh, certainly deserve a good look. I've heard good things about them, you know, being a lot quieter than the old, old ones. My experience has always been switching power supplies to computers, and I know that they can be extremely noisy. The projects around my house, I've got a lot of projects. Past week, I've been organizing my garage. I made two trips to the dump. I feel like uh, Red Fox and Sanford and Son because I've had junk pieces in the back for a lot of uh, old, uh, you know, metal uh, shelving and you know other things that just had to get get disposed of because they were falling apart and rusty over the years. And uh, I'm going to close up our pool and winterize it tomorrow. That time of year, and I got to pick up three tons of pellets for the winter. I'll get ready for winter as well. With that, I'll turn it back to that control. This is KX1B. Okay, thanks, you, Brian. Appreciate that. That's interesting. I've, I, it, it, I, I've never owned a linear power supply, um, and I can recall kind of what you were what you were suggesting. I can recall back in my youth. Uh, running a Radio Shack, or probably it was realistic at the time, power supply for a CB radio, and um, that thing would hum like a like you know what, and so you could even hear it, <laughs> so you know it was it was RF hash, and so I I agree there, Brian. So thanks very much for those comments. Let's go ahead over to Pelham, New Hampshire. Bob in Pelham, Kilo Charlie One, November Alpha, Quebec. Go ahead, sir. CC1 NAQ, thank you for running the net, Craig. Uh, yeah, as far as projects go, if, if I could ever break myself away from my wife's ongoing honeydew list and actually settle down for a moment to play in the shack lately, that's been kind of far-fetched. Um, 
far as power supplies go, being uh, new to ham, but not really too new to electronics, I prefer linear amps. Um, current one I'm running in the shack is the Astron 35 amp. And um, most recently exploring auctions on lithium power packs, and that's currently what I'm running now here at my camp. Um, lithium power packs are 991A, um, two batteries in it. And It'll go all day, but um, that's it here. Um, and one SFT, KC1 and AQ. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Yep. And I also appreciate the fact that you're running from camp tonight. And uh, that's we're headed up to our camp tomorrow night. So camp fall camping is what you is what it's all about. And uh, like I said, I. I I probably should invest in a linear at some point in my in my career, but uh, not yet. <laughs> I've got other things going on. And so let's take a pause here. Um, let's go ahead and check for any other stations up there. This is the New England Wolfpack Fusion Net. My name is Craig. The call sign here is November 1, Sierra Foxtrot Tango Net Control for this evening. Are there any stations out there wishing to check in to the New England Wolfpack Fusion Net? Please come now. is UA1 Victor Victor Hotel Harry from Top Home <laughs> Yeah this is the whiskey we'll go back here to I get you my name is Joel Okay, we've got Whiskey Alpha 1, Victor Victor Hotel, Harry and Pepperell, followed then by Whiskey 1, Quebec, India, Yankee, Joel and Wellesley. Very good. Any other stations wishing to check in, please come now. Okay, I've got Nick in Idaho. This is that is KJ7 Kilo Kilo Juliet 7 Quebec Echo Bravo. Nick in Idaho. Thank you very much for checking in, Nick. Any last minute stations check wishing to check in? Please come now. <laughs> Okay, we'll probably be able to squeak one one more out of that list tonight. We, I, at the at the height of it, I saw 20 nodes. We have we've had 220 nodes connected tonight, and that's that's pretty good. And we're at line number 26. So we've had uh, Mike in Gostown. He checked in and out. KC1 LXZ, and let's go ahead down to Kilo Bravo One Echo Echo Uniform John in Manchester. Any comments for this tonight, John? Go ahead. Still here, I'm not sleeping. Uh, real good neck, good, good neck running so far. Uh, <laughs> let me answer the uh, gentleman's question about the linear and the switching power supply. Uh, I never had a linear, uh, linear amplifier, but I hear a lot of good things about it. Excellent, excellent things about it. So I would like to try one of those one day. I do have a switching power supply, and that's what I've been using for the last uh, 10 or 15 years. I've had people on the new Alinko uh, switching power supply, 30 amp continuous, a regular one, so it's been very quiet. And so far, so good. I had it looking at this one. And it seems to work pretty good. But uh, as far as small projects, uh, really just uh, working on getting my uh, mobile rig finished up in my car with the SGM 400. I'm going to get that right away. Just been too busy with the kids. I guess the kids have been doing uh, the soccer sports now, so that just came to a full time job. So, yeah, just like every guy said, him radio's like on the back burner now for a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. But, uh, 
do have a camping trip planned coming up in October and Columbus Day weekend. We're going up to the White Mountains for a little camp up there in the mountains. So hopefully do some more activation or whatever, do something. Hopefully the weather will be good and uh, yeah, have some fun up there with the radio. I got a new wire antenna that I'm going to try out. So, uh, yeah, that's about it here from uh, Ranch Vegas, the city that never sleeps. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Appreciate checking in. Yep, I uh, I feel your pain as far as sports goes. My youngest, she's doing soccer on Saturdays, not at 7 a.m., not at 4 p.m., 10:30 in the morning. <laughs> so how do you wreck a day? That's how you do it. And my oldest, she's doing uh, two or three dance classes per week. So I, I, I feel the pain. Been there, done that. And so thanks for checking in. I'm, I, I'm, and I'm hoping to uh, catch you up, catch up with you on Columbus Day. All right, let's go to Rochester, New Hampshire. Kilo Charlie, uh, Kilo One Alpha Charlie Lima, Fred in Rochester. Any comments for that tonight uh, regarding the questions? Any uh, small projects tonight, or uh, and your and your opinion on a linear power supply? Or switching power supply. Go ahead, Fred. Very good. You're doing a great job tonight, there, Greg. I got an Astron 35 amp power supply that I've had ever since I can remember. It's run everything. Never had a problem. And I know the original switches were noisy. But what I would say right now, anybody that's buying a new power supply, I'd go with switching. They're just as good, if not better, lighter. And when you start having to move things around, <laughs> that makes a big difference. Yep. And as far as projects go, I have one project that's going to hopefully be done this weekend. Got to put up uh, an 80 and a 40 meter dipole. There's an inverted V. Want to get that up before the weather gets too cold. And like everybody else, there's so many projects around the house. Everybody that owns a house, I don't have to go into detail. <laughs> projects never end. Never end. Never end. And that's about it. Back to that. You want to ECL? Thank you, Fred. Appreciate that. It's um, it's it's a good experience there talking as far as uh, they, they 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 work, and they're probably just as good nowadays. Um, so thank you, Fred. Appreciate that. And you're darn right. The projects around the house they never end. And um, before we move on, I think I had a check in from uh, Mike Seven Tango Lima Foxtrot. If uh, you were trying to check in, please go ahead and come now. No, I just listening in on the side there. I've um, uh, actually got my hands busy. No problem. Thanks. Uh, I'll log you in on the on the net. I'm trying to beat our uh, all all time record of 35. So appreciate you checking in. And uh, if you're still around, we'll uh, we'll let you <laughs> we'll let you ask, ask the question. And so thanks very much for checking in. Uh, that was Mike Seven Tango Lima Foxtrot. Let's go ahead back up to line number 17. That would be Brad, North Waterboro, Maine. Kilo Charlie 1, Juliet, Mike Hotel. Brad, go ahead, sir. Roger that. This is KC1, JMH, Brad, Waterboro, Maine. Uh, just across the, uh, the border from the uh, Stafford, New Hampshire here. Uh, thanks for having me on the net. And uh, I'm glad that Neil hopped in there. I'm not the only uh, Mainer up yet. <laughs> um, supply, uh, I, I, I've only been in this for a couple of years. I went and bought the, uh, the cheapest power supply I could find on Amazon at the Fairmint, and it does the trick. It's a uh, switching power supply, of course, and uh, it uh, hasn't given me a whole lot of trouble. Uh, on, on some of my, uh, on my older radios, it might have given me a little bit of trouble around 
uh, maybe 10 meters. It certainly blew, blew out the speaker for uh, a CB, but I haven't otherwise had any trouble with it on any of the HF bands, um, especially the more recent radios. Of course, now I have it uh, tied into uh, a large EGM battery under my desk, uh, float charging with the uh, Epic power gate. Uh, when there's power, I can just keep on trucking like nothing happened, put my laptop into it. And if I need to top it off uh, while the power's still out of it, I can just put it on my solar panel right up in Harbor Braid. It's a uh, pretty good setup here. Um, as for projects, uh, I need to put the. Not sure if there's any repeater timeouts with theirs on that film, but I uh, figured I'd give it a rest. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time for projects lately. Uh, uh, I'm a thin leader for Cub Scout, so they're, they're my project right now. Uh, we're getting ready to do a couple of hikes this weekend, and of course I'll be uh, bringing a radio up with me for uh, emergency communication, uh, check in to, to the uh, 12 county net up here um, on Sunday morning. Uh, I do want to let everyone know too that the uh, main QSO party is this weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, just keep uh, listening on all the little bands and modes. Um, some information on mayhemradio.com uh, about that if anyone's interested. And uh, if I may, if I don't hold the mic too long, if I could ask a question myself, just case you want to make quick. All right, Brad, no problem. Go ahead with the question. That's what we're here for. Thank you very much. Um, I just, uh, I'm kind of stumbling my way through, uh, system fusion, and I hit the X button on my radio and found that, uh, there's a directory in there, uh, from the repeater, and, uh, some of my friends have talked about the zombie alert net, so I curiously, uh, uh tried to connect to it, and, uh, it comes up with a, a busy, um, alarm or notification on my, on my screen, a couple of zombie ones that I've tried to connect to and both say, uh, that it's busy and it failed. So uh, I was wondering if, uh, if, if it's something I'm doing wrong, or it's just um, the repeater <coughs> Stafford doesn't have means to connect to it after all, or, or what it might be. So thank you. All right, that's a that's actually a pretty good question. Um, let me. I'm gonna quickly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna s uh, scrape through the WireZX list here, and I'm gonna sort by uh, room name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by room name, and I'm going to go down to the Zs and find the, the room names starting with Z for zombie. And I'm getting there close, and here we go. The zombie alert network is room number 28298. Again, uh, and quickly, it's 28298. And it appears to be a digital-only room, and so the best way to connect to that room will be through the PBN network. Um, and so, if, if honestly, the the best way to do it, it would be to connect your FT3 or your FT100, FTM100, or your FTM400, or your FTM300, and I think your FT2 also are also available, and connect using the P, the PBN as Papa. Delta November method. That's using your laptop. Um, the question is a good question. We have uh, Bob on the on the net tonight, November one Echo Delta uniform, and uh, he may actually be able to answer whether or not the uh, the pharmacy machine is connecting to the zombie network. But um, so why don't we go ahead and turn it over to Bob N1 um, EUN? Do you have any answers? Go ahead, sir. Oh, hello everyone on the net. And uh, well, as far as I know, it's mainly on the Wolf Den. Um, I, I w it, it, it's uh, Wires X is is what's doing that. So if there's a way for Wires X, if there's a bridge, I could do it. But I'm guessing it probably won't do the zombie net. Um, also. Uh, for projects, boy, I got a ton of projects, but you know that work keeps getting in the way, and I never finish anything. It's terrible. And uh, as far as switching in linear, boy, 
the switching has its place. VHF and things that are left on because they draw less current and they kind of save on the electric bill. Up here in New Hampshire, it's a little more expensive for electric. And linear supplies, they draw more current usually, so I don't leave them on. But uh, I use them for HF, so there's no birdies or hash. And uh, I find switchers, every once in a while you'll find a little bit of hash, and it's usually the switcher. But, um, but true, yeah, today's switchers, they are much better than what they were before. But uh, I don't know, I get picky. Every once in a while I'll hear a little bit of hash. Pretty sure it's a switcher. So, um, but yeah, zombie net. Yeah, uh, unless there's a wires X room node on it, um, it, I don't think you can get into it from Farmington. Uh, this N one E U N. All right, thanks, Bob. I thought that, I thought you were running the node for the Ossipy retreater. That's why I threw you on there, threw you under the bus. I, pro I apologize for that, Bob. Um, you know, again, I thought you were running the node radio for the Ossipy um, system, so I figured you may, may know. The, uh, so Dave, and one uh, edu he runs the node for the Farmington machine. He's not on yet tonight that I have uh, seen at all. Why don't we go ahead and ask Brian, W-O-1-B-E-S. Brian, uh, do you have any ideas on the zombie net if uh, we should be able to get to it from the Farmington machine? Go ahead, Brian. Okay, as far as I know, you should be able to get to it. Long as you learn to use the YSX room, and uh, there's no reason uh, why, I mean, the system should be able to connect to any uh, YSX room. So make sure that uh, the, uh, I, I, the station is asking about it now, but make sure the station that they're uh, trying to connect is connecting to the room, not to the, uh, uh, to the um, nodes that, uh, that they host the room. There's usually two different numbers there for the whole thing. Make sure that, that they're connecting to room, not the nose. Like, uh, like the uh, sonum uh, repeater versus the uh, wolf den. Connect to the wolf den, no problem. Try to connect to the uh, sonum repeater, which is just one digit off on the uh, right. room number. Right. Uh, it's going to come up with a busy uh, signal. Um, otherwise, somebody else is going to have to try connecting up uh, Farmington over to uh, the zombie alert net to make sure it's actually connecting. So, uh, yeah. Could have come up somewhere along the line there, some some difficulty, some some interference, or something like that, and uh, uh, Farmington may have found itself on a block list of some sort. So, uh, there's all kinds of possibilities here, or there's something wrong with the port forwarding and it's not connecting for some reason, for whatever reason. So, as, as far as I'm aware, it should be able to connect without problem. <laughs> there's, there's no reason for it not to be, unless uh, something some technical issue has come up. W O one. All right, thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. So, Brad, it sounds like um, try it again. What, what radio are you using? Go ahead, uh, KC1 JMH. What radio are you using? Just out of curiosity. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but crash course in uh, how this all works here. Uh, I'm using the FT 991A uh, uh, Foxtrot Tango 991 Alpha. Okay, very good. Yep, that should be fairly easy to operate. And uh, if if that room number again, write this down. It's room number twenty eight, two ninety eight. And what you can do is you can smash that X button on the nine ninety one, and then there is a um, a search, and then you have to find the ID button. And when you find that ID button on the touch screen, touch that ID button, and then you'll see the pound sign. That's the number sign. Simply type in the number of 28298, hit enter, and uh, as long as you have a good connection to Farmington, and like Brian said, as long as there's no weird port forwarding problems with the internet, uh, you should be able to connect into it. And so uh, don't do it now, because we're running the net. <laughs> but uh, give it a try sometime and see if, uh, if that helps you at all. And, uh, and so uh, I, think, uh, I think you should be giving it a shot. Again, you're looking for the ID number which is inside of that uh, X button on the 991, and that should get you going. All right, Brad, thanks very much, and um, why don't we move on and go ahead down to uh, Minot, North Dakota. I guess that would be west to North Dakota. Um, no, I'm sorry, I skipped over Rick. 
Rick in Everett, Washington, W7. Romeo, Mike Hotel, Rick in Washington. Go ahead, sir. Well, good evening, all. Just wanted to say hello to all the good folks on the East Coast from a rather soggy Western Washington. Well, at least we got the smoke cleared out of here, which is a big plus. And uh, projects, well, I'm making another stab at learning CW. Another stab, and not the first one. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be the last one. Maybe I'll yep. be successful this time. And uh, I've got an Astron FS30 switching power supply, and I've been very happy with it. But I've never tried a linear, so I can't really comment on that. But that's about all I have to say, and I need to run to another net, so everybody stay safe, and we'll hopefully catch you again here before too long. W7RMH. All right, 73, Rick. Appreciate that. This net's running long, but that's because it's running good tonight. And so thanks for checking in to the New England Fusion Net. Appreciate that. And let's go ahead over to Minot, North Dakota, KC8, November, Fox, November, Kevin in Minot. Go ahead. This is KC8, and I think Kevin in Minot, North Dakota. Well, good evening to you, sir, and everybody on the net today. A great tonight. A lot of uh, good information. As far as power supplies, I like the uh, switching power supplies myself. I've owned both the uh, linear and the switching power supplies. I think, I like the one Jenna said, it really depends on the application or the radio you're trying to use them with. Uh, and I'll go on e -hem. Reviews on everything amateur radio. So I would get the model number and the brand you're looking at and go on eham.com and read a bunch of reviews, do your homework before you uh, just pick one up, uh, you know, just pick one, picking one out, so that's the story. And as far as the projects, uh, my amateur radio club that I belong to had a, uh, a club site with a uh, very nice HF station, 100 foot tower and a uh, a 50 foot tall tri band beam, and they have that connected up on the internet uh, through remote hands. So I've been using my laptop to uh, connect up to that and work the uh, remote station. And I'm trying to get some decent audio out of a few uh, microphones, and that's uh, a challenge, it seems like. Oh, microphones are tough. My laptop through the USB port and having a, uh, a hard time uh, getting good audio. All the ones I try just don't uh, sound very good. So I've, uh, I'm thinking about picking up a uh, Hyo XLR microphone and uh, adapting it for the PC. So that's what I've been uh, working on here. And uh, that's what I've got for the net. Also, this weekend is the mean QSO party. So I'll be trying to work that on uh, 20 meters this weekend. That ought to be interesting. Other nets, great nets, and appreciate you running it tonight. And we'll turn it back to a net control and get in here again next week. KC8 NFN, back to net control. Okay, Kevin, thanks very much for checking in from the uh, the northern, western part of the country. Appreciate that. Yeah, uh, the, the microphone project is a project, and um, I never would have thought that, but after uh, after I've seen some of the the questions and the how about this how about this how about this picking a microphone is actually a project so i totally agree with you kevin thanks very much and uh why don't we uh really quickly really super quickly before we go on to dave and wolfboro let's ask for any last minute check-ins any last minute check-ins anywhere anywhere any any stations please come now and seven tlf messed up M7 CLF, I've got you in there. Were you checking in or checking out? I don't know, no, next time I'm checking in, I was checking in. Yeah, I was busy out there doing a bit of drawing on the computer from a 3D printer. <laughs> well, very good. I've got you in here. Uh, what's your first name again, sir? Your first name, please. 
the name this end is Tim, that's Tango India Mike, Roger. USL Tim, Tango India Mike, good evening Mike, and uh, I think you are probably our longest contact here in the New England net, and so is your, is your uh, city London, go ahead. Uh, my city is the city of Leicester, the centre of England, uh, as they call it, uh, part of England. Leicester City, I'm five miles south of the city centre itself. Back to you. <laughs> Copy that. Very good. Thank you very much, Tim. So while, while we've got you, um, the, the topic of tonight is, do you have any, any opinion on a switching power supply versus a linear power supply and then the, the the net topic was do you have any small small projects that you want to let us know about uh, go ahead Tim in one is here uh, TM 70 uh, yeah linear switching power supplies I'm using one now they're okay I do find if you get them a bit close to the radio or coaxes they can cause hum uh, in which case, you know, I would prefer a linear switching power supply or maybe a solar power panel uh, to do it, do the job. Yeah, uh, little project. So that's what I was doing on the uh, computer earlier for the radio I'm using at the moment, which is the FT nine nine one A, and uh, it has an upward facing speaker, and uh, so a lot of the uh, I believe uh, is lost on that, the audio on that. So I, I just three D uh, printed a little. Uh, things are directed towards me. Now, what I've done this evening was uh, make one for bottom-facing speakers, which is a lower profile. Back to you. <laughs> oh, very good. You're, you're the first to bring up 3D printing this evening, so that sounds fantastic. And uh, thank you very much, Tim, for checking in to the New England uh, Wolfpack Fusion Net, all, across, all the way from, new, from England, some from, from old England to New England. <laughs> so thanks very much, Tim. And... Uh, Please, uh, please check in uh, next week as well. And so let's go back up to line number 20, 20, That's November 1, Foxtrot, Charlie, Charlie, Dave, and Wolfboro. Uh, go ahead with your comments, sir. Hello, this is Dave in one FCC. And for all of those who have radios repeated, you can turn your fans on now because I got a big list tonight, so I'm going to be talking a lot. <laughs> as far as power supplies go, I have the best luck with the cheap Chinese switchers. Uh, I've been using them for years. They cost like nothing. They work great. Uh, what I do to make a nicer environment, as people claim, is I put uh, a 25 amp bridge rectifier in series with it, and then I have a battery connected to the other AC input lead of the uh, bridge rectifier with a light bulb going across to act as a inrush charge um, limiter on the battery so if the uh, you know if we run out of power and I run the battery down that I don't you know put 50 amps into the battery uh, that's how I run it I have uh, you know just a uh, the bridge rectifier the um, rack mount not the rack mount the uh, frame mount power supply costs 20 30 dollars uh, works great and then I tie that up to power poles with a meter you grab a um, I have linears also. Um, talking about linears in my job at DEC, we used to uh, format um, hundreds of hard drives at the same time, so 100 or 200 amp linear supplies that I would work with, and uh, they're great for arc welding. So it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Um, but right now, all my all my ham stuff is running on on, on switchers. Uh, as far as projects and new kits, I got a uh, Arborist throw bag over the weekend. Uh, I've had trouble um, with uh, spud shooters and things getting stuck, and I did. I had some uh, tree guys at the house, and they had their arborist throw bag, and it's like, wow, this one guy was, you know, whipping the thing up 70 foot in the tree, and so I had to have one. So I got that. As far as projects, uh, I'm working on K2 and TIX. I've got a uh, Zum radio. Let me get the white. With the Zum radio. Uh, out of the bag, it transmitted fine, so um, I can hear the repeater perfectly, but uh, uh, tuning in uh, receive, so I could get it to um, hear my radios, uh, that's where the project lies right now. 
Um, you know, you, you tune in, you just you tune in, you just it's um, a little bit of an art form. I'm also working on an XLX repeater, it's kind of reflector, it's sitting down in the basement when I get to it. Uh, the big thing I have is kind of cool, this is uh, what I need a bike for, hold on. And uh, Bob is aware of this also. Um, I have a repeater uh, on Warner Hill in Derry that is on a gigantic tower that has unobstructed view all the way to Boston, and it's on D-Star. And up at Deerfield a couple years ago, I got some three-port duplexer cans. And uh, the project that uh, the uh, New England Regional Digital Society, or Nerds Club, is working on right now is uh, putting uh, the Fusion DR1X and the uh, Kenwood 720, uh, 820 V-Star repeater on the same antenna, on the same tower, um, using the three-port duplexers and uh, node reject cans to allow both transmitters to simultaneously transmit out of the same antenna. <laughs> and uh, it is, uh, you know, psycho. Is, is there a coax on the tower where we could put another antenna up there? <coughs> Sorry, to me. Uh, but uh, doing the six can with the three port um, duplexer cans uh, seem like fun. Those are the projects that uh, hopefully we'll get KV1TIX back on the air and the new 440 KV1TIX uh, fusion machine in theory. Back to net control. Hey, Craig, you're doing a great job. Net one FCC. <laughs> All right, Dave, thanks very much for that. Yeah, I, I definitely think we should put the fans on at this point. Hi, hi. No, that sounds great. Uh, the uh, the Warner Hill Tower, if I know the one you're talking about, uh, that is that's got a wicked footprint. So that's going to be a fantastic fusion repeater. I can't wait to, to try that. Um, hopefully, hopefully though, I'll get mine up before yours. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Thanks, Dave, for checking in. I really appreciate it. It's always a fun time. All right, let's go back to the the uh, big state of Maine, and let's go to Neil in Paris. November Bravo Niner Delta. Neil in Paris. Go ahead. All right, Neil is probably he's probably gone to sleep at this point. This this net's running pretty long, guys. I apologize for that, but I think we're having a good time. Let's go to Joe at Holliston, Mass. Uh, that's November one, Juliet Indigo Whiskey. Go ahead, Joe. Good evening, to everyone on the net. Uh, while you guys were playing around, I just tried to connect to the zombies, and if I connect into the user which is the one that starts with 18298, I get a busy, and if I go to the room, 28298, I uh, can connect, just as uh, Brian said would happen. So that's what the story was, at least from here. And I'm just using the standard old-fashioned. Uh, the computer's connected up to a FTM 400, and... Uh, I'm using an FT70 to talk on, so that's how I work this thing. Cool. Uh, in terms of uh, power supplies, I think I have switches. I have whatever they sold me in HRO. They're hand drums. Yeah. I think they're switches. And then the other project is I just bought a new radio, HF, and trying to get it all set up to <coughs> operate remotely. And uh, got a lot to learn how to use it. That's what's going on here. Back to that control. <laughs> All right, Joe, thanks for the report. Appreciate that. And, um, yeah, I hear you as far as uh, I'm, that's, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm still running the, the same uh, same power supply that I bought when I bought this rig. And so let's go ahead uh, over to Purple Mass, and we'll check in with Harry. Whiskey Alpha 1, Victor, Victor Hotel. Go ahead, Harry. Okay, yep, so that is where we rather long. <laughs> These uh, potential worldwide connections, we could get out of hand in a big hurry, you just never know uh, how this is going to work with this 478 check-ins, like, hi. Uh, you know, as far 
as power supplies, I have used all linear supplies because I you know, I, I, I guess I'm more of an old timer than some of the guys on here, but I watched when switching power supplies first came you know, first came into existence and became a uh, an available product. And the first couple of generations were hideous. They were noisy, they were prone to sudden failures if they experienced unusual load changes. I mean, the, uh, the early generation had a raft of technical problems, most of which I will admit have been solved pretty well by now. But I've been using Astron linears for so long, I just see no need to change. They're very quiet. You don't have hum problems with them as long as they're working right. And uh, they've got three really big ones here, a 35 and 250s, that I use to power all the various stuff in the ham shack here. And all three of them have just been purring and purring and purring for years. And if anyone, any one of them ever does fail, they're all using off-the-shelf industry standard components, and they're repairable. So it's another thing you can't say too much about equipment nowadays anymore. So uh, anyway, that's my take on that. But uh, yes, I don't want to have to carry them around if I don't need to. Hi, hi. <laughs> as far as other activities, well, the weather's been beautiful. We've had very little rain this summer is bad in some ways, but it's been great for getting outdoors, so I've done more hiking this summer than I probably ever have in my life. I'm into geocaching, so I've been setting a few personal records on that, too, and just putting miles under my feet, so uh, I'll enjoy that until it gets too cold and the snow flies, I guess. Back to net, WA1ZVH. <laughs> Thank you very much, Harry. Appreciate that. Yep, for sure. Um, this has been a, a, a great great year to get outside, and so and thanks very much for the the, uh, the power supply comments. Appreciate that. Joel in Wellesley, Mass. Uh, w one T Y Y. Go ahead. Any comments for that tonight, Joel? All right, Joel, thanks very much for checking in. It's always a pleasure having you check in. All right, let's go over to in uh, Idaho, Nick in Idaho, KJ7, Quebec, Echo, Bravo, KJ7, QEV, Nick in Idaho, go ahead. Okay, Nick is, we'll set Nick as not heard. And line 27, we've had Mike 7, Tango Lima, Foxtrot, Tim in Great Britain. Any any final comments for the net tonight, Tim? Go ahead. Uh, no, no final comments tonight. I'm going to uh, turn into the back now. It's nearly half two in the morning here. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give you 73s, and uh, I shall catch you uh, next time. All right, Tim. Thanks very much, and uh, appreciate that. And definitely get get to sleep. Jeez, Louise, it's, we got four hour differences. So, <laughs> thanks for checking in, Tim. All right, folks. I think uh, we'll we'll I'll, I'll do the the uh, requisite ask. Are there any other stations up there wishing to check in? Last minute check ins. Any last minute check ins? Please come now. Okay, before anybody checks in, I'd like to say 73 all. I, I don't think we're going to have time for the 73 round, our patented uh, 73 round. This is N1SFT. My name is Craig. I've enjoyed being your net control this evening for the New England Wolfpack Fusion Net. Um, and so I'm going to close this net down. Is there any station out there with any last-minute comments at all? Um, any stations, any comments? Go ahead. Okay, very good. This has been a fantastic net. At the height of it, we had 21, two one nodes connected. We are have we have 27 on the list tonight. That's a that's a personal record for me. Uh, still still nothing compared to Brian's 35, but we'll work on that. 
And uh, Ed and Gloucester, I think you've got a, a pretty hard decision to make. Uh, by my count, you've got about a 50-50 shot. <laughs> so I'd say about half of the folks checked in said about linear, and half the other half said switcher. And so I don't think we answered any questions for Ed tonight at all. And so with that, um, I'd like to thank you all uh, for checking into tonight's New England Wolfpack Fusion Net. The net meets every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I now return the Wolfpack Network to general amateur use. 73 everyone, this is N1 SFT Net Control, and I will be clear. Miss Dave's checking at the very end and uh, <laughs> didn't give me a chance to get in with my comment here, but I was going to say the, the other uh, station there that was trying to uh, get Farmington in. Uh, another possibility too, but. Uh, uh, Craig, you said that uh, the, somebody had the uh, Farmington repeater linking to something else uh, at net time last uh, Friday. Um, maybe Dave got annoyed and locked the repeater to only connect into the Wolfman and nothing else, too. <laughs> Could be. Anyway, now you all want me. Thanks for taking the net tonight. Uh, no problem, Brian. I appreciate that. No, I, I think you might be right. I think Dave may have, uh, may have locked that system down. Uh, we'll have to, I'll have to check in with Dave in the morning and see how that's going. Um, but uh, I don't know. I didn't want to give Dave any more uh, N1 FCC any more shots. Hi, hi. <laughs> so, no, I think this, this was a fantastic net. I had a lot of fun with that, and um, I really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to serve. So, uh, it, it, again, if anybody's out there still listening and you wanted to, to chime in any time, just say uh, net check, and uh, we'll stop and, and let you have the podium. In the last call to check in, KA1NFB tried to check in there, but you didn't hear him, so... <laughs> You may have one more check-in out there waiting. Interesting. It's, he's not showing up on the user list. Uh, so go ahead with that call sign again. Thanks for giving me a chance to pop in. That was uh, KA1MFB. He may have doubled with the uh, wire vex radio, and if that's, ca if that's the case, he would not have gotten across the network. He would show up on the web. KA1MSB, this is N1SFD. Are you out there? Go ahead. Uh, this is KA1MSB. Uh, just Checking in to give you another number on the list. Uh, uh, not many, no comment tonight. Back to you. Ah, uh, thank you, Dave, for checking in. I appreciate it. You you make the uh, the highest number tonight. You're number 28, and I apologize. I uh, so tell me, how are you coming in? How were you coming in originally? Because uh, something stepped on you. Go ahead, Dave. I was coming in through uh, Brian's repeater in Stoneham. Uh, that's what I'm now uh, using. Okay, copy that. Very good, Dave. Appreciate that. I, uh, again, again, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't hear you come in. And I didn't see you come into the system. And um, I, I guess I, I admit I was getting a little antsy there. And uh, we, I've never had the net run to an hour and a half before. And I don't, I didn't want to uh, to uh, turn people away. But uh, I'm, I'm glad you stuck it out, and I appreciate you. Uh, calling in there, and I, again, I apologize uh, for not catching your call. Yeah, yeah, no problem there. Well, I was busy watching the hockey game, too, the Stanley Cup playoffs, so I had the volume up and down uh, watching the game, so, uh, and then I heard you were last, asking for last minute check-in, so I figured I'd give you another number on your list, so uh, you get closer to Bar Brian's high number. <laughs> he won my sugar victim back to you. <laughs> All right, copy that, Dave. I appreciate it, and um, I hope the game went okay. I, I was hearing on the radio on the way home from work today that they were the NFL was piping in uh, audio of of the crowds from like two or three years ago, 
And what was interesting was, if it was a like a Redskins game, they would go and find find, find footage of Redskins fans screaming, <laughs> and they would either so. The stands are empty, of course, but they're still piping in actual fan noise uh, from from the team, whatever team is playing. So I found that pretty interesting. <laughs> so I hope your your game was as interesting. Yeah, that's a Roger. They're doing the same thing on this too. It's uh, tied up two to two in the second period, and uh, it's the the Dallas North Stars and the uh, the Florida team. Uh, Boston got knocked out early, but this is the Stanley Cup final, and yeah. I like hockey, so I'm watching it. And yeah, they are piping in sounds. <laughs> All right, very good. Thanks, Dave. I want to say 73 for now, and I'm going to go QRT. I'm going to go find something cold and brown and put it in a nice glass. You guys have a great night. This is N1SFT. I will be QRT. And now we shut it down. Sheila for Charlie 1, November only. AC1, NRW, we're trying to check in. Yes, I'm trying to check in. I've been listening for like uh, 10 minutes. Uh, yes, I'm trying to check in because uh, uh, I just got off work uh, <laughs> over, uh, over time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, appreciate it. Uh, so you're one of the last uh, New Hampshire check ins for the night. You're number line, line number 29. I'll throw you down there. Give me a shot. Um, so the question tonight was a couple things. Uh, one of the stations checking in, Ed and Gloucester, was asking them about uh, our opinions on a linear power supply or a switching power supply. And so it, it really boils down to um, how that power supply makes the, the energy, makes converts your house current to 12 volts. And so if you had any opinions on that. And then the other question of the night was, do you have any small projects uh, going on? ham radio or not, but um, probably if you could lean it towards ham radio, that'd be fine. But those are the two questions for tonight. Uh, go ahead, John. First question, I have no idea. I've been a month for, for uh, I've been a month in ham radio. Uh, so uh, I'm still uh, learning a, lot, a bunch of stuff. And the second question is small project. Let's see. Well, I'm reading my call. Uh, it's built in it. Uh, I guess that's not that's not a small project. That's a big project. Um, Hand radio wise, um, I got nothing right now. I'm just enjoying my uh, wire. Uh, my F FDM two two hundred twenty two. Two hundred two fifty. My brain is all messed up. I just got back from work for a second. So, uh, <laughs> I'm and I just want to check in. Uh, like I said, um, I have to just. Uh, well, good evening to everybody on the net uh, also. Yeah, back to you. <clears throat> no problem, John. Appreciate you checking in. The uh, 7250, that's a good radio. It's a nice dual bander. Um, in fact, I, I I decided incorrectly when I was buying the mobile for my pickup truck, I ended up with the 3200, and uh, I really should have bought the 7250 because uh, that that mono bander, the 70, the 3200, the mono band th uh, two meter. It uh, obviously lacks the 440 side, and so it turns out all the fusion radios around here, other than the Farmington system, are 440. And so uh, you, you've made a good choice over there, John. And um, So curiously, uh, which repeater are you coming in through? You're, you're uh, listed as Peterborough, so which repeater are you coming in through? So um, yesterday I was doing... Gromstar repeater, that's, uh, you know, when we talk about the heart and stuff, and uh, uh, that's my sub RX, uh, it's uh, uh, at the uh, house. Uh, I'm going to the Farmington uh, right now, it's on, I'm on a hill, so I can reach it, and it's actually a better signal than the Gromstar, I don't know why, it's very, <laughs> Yeah, the Farmington repeater, that's where I'm at. And I look at my map, it's like, hey, it's on the road. 
KC1 LKO from N1SFT. Somehow you made it in before I hit the close net button. So you, you sir, are line number 30. KC1 LKO, go ahead. Miguel, we've got you in there, but you're breaking up a little bit. Um, I'm going to guess you're not on your, your base station. Go ahead, Miguel. KC1LKO from N1SFT. Any copy, Miguel? Go ahead. 